So, let us start with say P and R let us say P and R see all the premises are given to us and we want to conclude this. So, you can at a time say that all of them are given therefore, I can add them together right. So, let us say all of them are added. So, this is the proposition we get by taking conjunct of all the premises. Okay. Now, I can apply some associativity rule or commutativity rule because we want to see that q and s are together. So, how can I get q and s together? I have to move out all the other things, right. So, use commutativity and associativity. So, once you have associativity, this parenthesis can move anywhere. Once you have commutativity, there order can change right. So, we can just comment out that we have using commutativity and associativity. So, by using this I can write as P and P and R and T as one and the other as S and Q or if you take commutativity you can write also Q and S right. So, let us write that. Fine. But we do not want only this, we want only Q and S, not all the other things, right. So, what would give us that? The law of elimination, which says x and y, from there you can conclude x, from x and y, you can conclude y, right. So, that is called law of elimination. Using that, we can go for this entails q and s, ok. So, just look at what we are doing here. In the first instance, we are telling this is equivalent to this, ok, because the laws of commutativity and associativity they give us equivalences x and y and z is equivalent to x and y and z. Also, we have commutativity in the form x and y equivalent to y and x that is a law, but in that law we first consider x and y or z even as propositional variables. Then those propositional variables have been substituted here, right. So, we are using uniform substitution. Is that okay? So, for example, here when you come from commutativity to associativity, we take P and P and R and T first we take. So, associativity is used, commutativity is also used, both the things used simultaneously with uniform substitution, right. Then from this step to this step, again the same procedure x and y entails y. So, x and y are considered as propositional variables, there you substitute x as this, y as this, then you obtain this. So, see that all the laws and the meta theorems are in work, ok. So, these laws, these meta theorems like uniform substitution, we are not mentioning it anywhere, because of those only we are able to apply the laws, ok. So, we will not mention them even. Since they are, it is permitted, so we proceed. That is the way it will proceed. Then, such a thing is called a calculation. So, a calculation would look like some proposition you will start with, then you join with the next proposition by one of these two symbols equivalence or entailment. Okay. And each of those sentences uh, together some equivalence or some consequence relation, they are justified by the use of laws and the meta theorems, fine. But finally, what do you get? You would be getting first sentence or first proposition entails or equivalent to the last proposition. Okay. If at least once you have used entailment, then it will be written as entails. If nowhere you have written entails, then it will be equivalent also. 
because equivalence is stronger than the entanglement. You know that x is equivalent to y if and only if x entails y and also y entails x, right. So, that is stronger. Therefore, at least once occurrence of entanglement will produce only entanglement at the final result, right. So, now let us see the second one. P implies Q implies R not R P entails not Q. So, how do you proceed? P so that is by modus ponens right P P implies Q implies R so this gives modus ponens Q implies R now Q implies R not R gives not Q by modus tollens huh? its name is modus tollens right so you can write a calculation so we start with P implies Q implies R. Now, if there are many premises, so you may not like to add them all together at the beginning. What we do is as we go along, whenever you need a premise, we just add it together. Then, in that case, on the documentation line, we will be writing P, that is something else we are introducing here, which is a premise, right. So, for example, here we can start with one P itself because we need it from the beginning itself right. So, now our plan is to use mode exponents here. So, we just write document it as mode exponents which entails q implies r right. Then what happens with q implies r we want to add also not r fine. So, here itself we can add not r or from here you can plan what is happening right. So, in that case you say this and not r. So, here first thing is you are using a premise right. Next thing is you are using modus tollens to conclude the next sentence. So, you write modus tollens and this entails not q that is the end of it. Modus tollens says x implies y uh, then not y this entails not x. Okay. This is not difficult to see. See by contraposition x implies y is equivalent to not y implies not x. Now, use modus ponens. So, it is a combination of modus ponens and contraposition. Okay. Let us see the third one. P implies r implies not p implies not q implies q implies r. So, how do you propose to go about? This should be valid right that is what we want to prove. it looks a bit clumsy huh? because from p implies r you are getting all those things. But then anyway, if you start thinking that way then you can use deduction theorem right. So, by deduction theorem you can start from this prove the whole thing after the implication sign again that is an implication sign. So, you can again take this as assumption try to prove this 
that is also in the form of implication. So, you can take Q again as a premise, prove only R, right? It is a serial implication. So, that means by deduction theorem, we need to show that P implies R, then not P implies not Q, Q entails R. Is it clear? There are three steps. Huh? First step is P implies R, this entailment goes here, replaces the implication sign. Right? P implies R entails this whole thing. Next step is again that is in the implication form, conclusion. So, you say P implies R, comma, not P implies not Q, entails Q implies R. Next step again bring Q to the left side, so you obtain this. Now, can you show this? It should be easy. Yes? Yeah. So, suppose you want to use modus tollens, then this should be in the form not not q, which is because q is equivalent to not not q by double negation, right? So, you can start from there. So, let me start with say q and I intend to use double negation. Okay. So, that is equivalent to not not q and I introduce another premise. So, and not p implies not q. So, justification is adding a premise and then for the next step I want to use modus tollens. So, let me write modus tollens. So, that gives entailment. What does it give? Not me? Negation of that, right. Look at modus tollens. It says x implies y not y entails not x right. So, this is your x not p, y is not q. So, not y x implies y that gives not x. So, not not p. Okay. Is that right? Then we use double negation again that gives P and add the other premise so you have used another premise here and plan is to use modus ponens so that gives q r clear but even you can prove this directly let's have another calculation we have not used equivalent substitution till now. See the problem is you have used modus tollens and double negation to bring to one form where not symbol is not there, right. Now, not p implies not q, yes, can be replaced by q implies p because of contraposition, okay. So, let us try that avenue. So, we can start the calculation from p implies r as is given not p implies not q implies q implies r. Our aim is to use contraposition here. So, you write contraposition that makes it equivalent to p implies r implies q implies p implies Q implies R. Next, distribution of implication, right. So, distribution of implication says that 
this is equivalent to x implies y implies x implies z. Now, it is matching with the right side. So, that we can replace by the left side. So, that says equivalent to P implies R implies Q implies P implies R. Okay. Is that right? Then this is your distribution of implication that we have used. So, let us mention it here distribution of implication. Next what to do? Our aim is to show that it is valid. Well, this itself is valid, it is your hypothesis invariance x implies y implies x right. So, you say that x implies y implies x is valid itself. So, that means it is equivalent to top that is your hypothesis invariance fine. So, you want to apply that now with x you have p implies r here and with y you have q here. Okay. So, we just write hypothesis invariance and that is equivalent to top. So, in a calculation when you want to show something valid it will be easier to show that that is equivalent to top because you are going through equivalences or entailment or you can show top entails that that may need some ingenuity which one to introduce you would not know. Top is a constant it can be written in any form which is valid. So, which form will give rise to that one will be a bit difficult to find out right, but this way if you go end with top it might become easier is it clear. P implies Q implies R next premise is S implies not P. Next premise is not S and T uh, implies Q. You want to show that this entails T implies R. Any doubt? So, take a little bit of time to see how to form the strategy. So, first thing you should see is the conclusion is in the form T implies R. Okay. It is an implication. So, you can use deduction theorem. Fine. So, by deduction theorem, we saw P implies Q implies R, S implies not P, not S and T implies Q, T entails R. So, it needs some back thinking, some backward thinking will be required here. How to get this R? We have here P implies Q implies R. So, you must show first P implies Q in order that you will be able to apply modus ponens, right. Now, how to get P implies Q? Q will be obtained from this, right. So, not S and T should be proved. Okay. Then not S and T where from? From P you can get not S 
t is already there is that okay so you need p and then you will get not s then not s and t will give you q therefore you have p implies q where from you get p implies q you are getting only q but you are getting q from the assumption that p is that okay so you have got really p implies q by deduction theorem so it looks the strategy should work and do you understand the backward reasoning it says we want r so you should prove first p implies q now to prove p implies q we assume p derive q so if you assume p then along with this it gives not s right you have not s you have t so from that you get q therefore p implies q is that okay then from p implies q you go to r now where to start how to start it Hmm? T, because the problem is, if you prepare the way we have prepared here for the deduction theorem, at a time we have prepared this and then it proceeds. But here there is a problem. If you prepare like this, it comes only to this, and in between you have a sub lemma that is to be proved. P implies Q. Now to prove P implies Q, you have to assume P, and then come to Q in a deduction theorem. right so that becomes a sub calculation inside the calculation that is creating problem how to adjust the sub calculation inside a calculation well you can have something like indentation follow on indentation prove it then come back by the deduction theorem but that will be looking clumsy huh? well here only reductio ad absurdum will help huh? so what do we do take negation of r with this try to prove bottom fine so let's try that by reductio ad absurdum we saw p implies q implies r s implies not p not s and t implies q t not r enters bottom it should be unsatisfiable okay so now you have another premise which is not r you can use it here then modus tollens and continue strategy clear now so let's start with not r which is a premise and then add also p implies q implies r okay in the first step you need not write premises because anyway you have to start with premises okay so two premises we have taken our plan is to use modus tollens not y x implies y gives not of x fine so let's write modus tollens which gives and tells negation of p implies q but how to use negation of p implies q here you have to use it some of its equivalent form right so its equivalence is p and not q right negation of p implies q is p and not q so that is called as implication right you can say implication so law of implication that gives equivalent to p and not q now then we have to introduce some more premises which one we will take either this or this because q is there p is also here so one of this you can use which one choose Which one will you use? This or this? 
it is non deterministic you have to choose something then start with this one S implies not P okay. So, and S implies not P. So, we are using a premise here and then what else P is modus tollens you want to use modus tollens because S implies not P is here. So, first you have to bring it to not y form right. So, double negation that is equivalent to not P with another not not Q and S implies not P. Then you go for modus tollens, modus tollens is not an equivalence right. So, this entails with this is your not y, this is x implies y. So, that gives not x, not s and not q. Not s is here, t is also here. So, you can use a premise t, this is a premise, but not only that you need not s and t implies q also. So, let us use that another premise. Okay. Is that clear? But then we want not s and t together. So, you need associativity and commutativity of and. Fine. So, let us write that. for this bringing them together. So, this is equivalent to okay. we can keep it we do not know whether we will need it or not huh? let us continue and see. So, not q and not s and t and not s and t implies q right. So, next we want to use modus ponens x and x implies y there should be a bracket here because of precedence rules. So, then we have modus ponens which entails not q as it is and q now you see it is coming of health. Huh? So, this is the law of constants that gives bottom. In fact, it is equivalent to bottom. Is it clear? Hmm? So, the question is whether x entails bottom, x equivalent to bottom at the same or not? No? Answer should be yes, because bottom entails anything trivially right. So, when you say x equivalent to bottom it means x entails bottom and bottom entails x, but bottom always entails x right. So, therefore, they are same x entails bottom or x is equivalent to bottom is it correct. So, we need only bottom here anyway it entails is enough for us, but you can write also equivalent here finally, anyway it is entails bottom because there is at least one entail symbol here. Okay. Since it is implication we can simply start with P and R as a new premise and your conclusion will be this one only right. So, by deduction theorem it is enough to do this entailment right. So, when you are making the strategy you look at the conclusion it is in the form of not w implies v. So, there is one way not of w implies v is equivalent to w and not v right. 
So, from all these premises you can infer W, you can also infer not V, then add them together and conclude this that is all right or there is another way you can use reduction of upside down. So, that W implies V once taken as a premise will give you bottom that looks easier here right you do not have to do so many calculations. Okay. Let us take that view. So, we add W implies V as a premise and try for reaching bottom. Okay. So, just one application of deduction theorem, one application of deduction of upsidedum. Now, we can think where to go. See all these are implications except one which is P and R from which you can use P you can use R also. So, let us take P if I take P I would get not Q not Q would give me T right T would give not V ok. Let it be there not V you can take not W also but does not matter stop at not V even. So, from P I can get not V. What can I get from R? R gives S, S gives not U, not U gives W, W gives V. So, V not V will give bottom. Is it clear? So, let us start. We start with P and R. So, this entails P, but our strategy says we want to use also R, right. So, let us keep R throughout, right, that will also be helpful, we will not eliminate now. So, then from P, I want to use P implies not Q, right. So, I can just keep R as it is and then manipulate all the others, fine. So, instead of entails P, I will introduce a new premise P implies not Q and keep my R as it is, okay. So, let us start with this and P implies not Q, this I can start with. So, I want to use modus ponens, so that gives R is kept as it is and P, P implies not Q gives not Q. So, it is not only modus ponens, I have used commutativity R comes beginning, associativity I have not used parenthesis anywhere and is there right. So, both the things are used implicitly here associativity and commutativity fine. Now, with not Q our plan is to use not T implies Q. So, introduce another premise here. So, I have used the premise and then we want to use modus tollens. So, that gives R and not of not t right. So, at a stage if you want you can put double negation here ok. So, not of not t will be equivalent to t now fine with t which one this one modus ponens had this not t been on the other side I could have used modus tollens right, but it is on the left side. So, I cannot use that, but this one I can use by modus ponens. So, introduce another premise T implies not of V. So, premise and modus ponens that gives R and not V. So, our plan was to keep not V there, start responding from R. Right? So, then for that we need another premise which is R implies S. So, we will use P and then R, R implies S will give by modus ponens not V. So, let us give not V here and R, R implies S will give us S fine. Then our plan was to use S implies not U, add a premise and then use 
modus ponens to get not v and not u. So, our plan was to use not u implies w. So, we add a premise. and use modus ponens that gives not v and w okay next step w implies v so add a premise and use modus ponens so that gives not v and v there we are done so it is the law of constants Intel's button. Is that clear? Okay. See, we had observed some discomfort in one of the problems where we had to use redox word absurdum because deduction theorem becomes a sub lemma. And our proposal was you can have some indentation, so that it is a sub calculation inside a calculation, then conclude and carry on, right. But to do that sub lemma inside, sub calculation inside a calculation, you have to write a line by deduction theorem and so on, because we are not able to use deduction theorem as it is inside a calculation, okay. The sequence of uh, steps which are joined by equivalent symbol or entanglement symbol prevents us to do that. Right. So, the proposal is what do we do? We forget equivalence, we just continue with entanglement and do not write it, right, because everything is entanglement. So, we will not write it at all, but then how to use deduction theorem for example? So, we can evolve some schemes. For example, suppose I have x, I have uh, y, so this I am taking as an extra premise. And I see that by entanglement relation, all these entanglements gives me y. Then I conclude in the next step x implies y. But when I conclude this x implies y, here this extra assumption is removed, it is no more an extra assumption. Without assuming anything, I could have concluded x implies y by deduction theorem. That is the way deduction theorem should work, right assume some extra premise and then conclude y, then finally, you say without assuming that extra premise I could have got x implies y, right, because deduction theorem says sigma union x, x is an added premise, n tells y, therefore, sigma n tells x implies y, fine. So, these things can be incorporated provided you do not have a calculation like this, but just continue the proof thinking that everything is an entanglement. Right. So, what we do there is we have to mention this that it is an extra premise and then mention it here that my extra premise is removed, it is no more an extra premise. So, these two things we have to tell in some way, right, we have to write it in some way. So, what we do is when we take this extra premise, we will write a deduction theorem begins, right. So, here we are using the deduction theorem starting. Then when we end it, we will write deduction theorem ends. Okay. So, it will tell us that inside this we have used deduction theorem with this as the extra premise, then have concluded this by taking away that extra premise. Right. Similarly, for reduction or absurdum, what do we do? You are taking another assumption say not w, sigma union not w, entails bottom. Right. Therefore, sigma n tells w, fine. So, we can add one extra premise not w, which is an extra premise, then finally, with entanglements we get bottom and the next step should be w without this extra premise anywhere. By assuming this extra premise, whatever sigma is used 
those premises from sigma can be used here also inside this. But then after this once we derive bottom we say that this extra premise is now removed to say that all the other premises used entails W that is what deductive order of sodom is right. So, again here what we do we will just mark it with reductio or absurdum begins and then when we conclude this w after the bottom we will write reductio or absurdum ends right. So, we are just thinking it loudly how to implement it we will see is that clear, but the thing is this is not clearly eradicating our sub lemma uh, sub calculation we have to use that somewhere. So, that will come as a nesting. So, inside this deduction theorem there can be another deduction theorem. Okay. So, we will write this as 1 this as 1 and again inside this we will write deduction theorem begins, but it is the second loop and then it should end somewhere else inside that loop itself. If it crosses the loop then it is wrong it is a wrong use because by that you have assumed both x and the other one right that is not permissible. So, that means we can have loops like this a nesting of structures of d t b d t e we can number them. Similarly, this also and when both are involved there should not be again any criss cross that should be a nesting of this inside that or that nesting should be inside completely this right is the plan clear. So, such a thing which is written in this fashion where deduction theorem reduction adoption both are included is called an informal proof it is not very formal because to make it formal we have to give some meta arguments. Okay. We will call it an informal proof. Let us try the fifth one to illustrate how this informal proof proceeds because we know already how it is going it will just go the same way, but now deduction theorem reduction arsodom will be used inside. Okay. So, we start with the original not with this form. So, we start with P implies not Q and R implies S, not T implies Q, S implies not U, T implies not V, not U implies W, this entails P and R implies not of W implies V. Okay. So, what is our plan to use deduction theorem? So, we start with P and R as the extra premise just look at that proof you can understand how this proceeds. So, we will have three columns now in an informal proof first one we will give the line numbers. So, that we can refer them back right second one we will have the correct proof third one we will have the documentation just like our this m p p m t and so on. So, we will be starting with p and r its justification is extra premise which is deduction theorem begins. Okay. So, second line is from p and r we are using p implies not q as a premise. So, we can just add it again p and r and p implies not q justification is it is a premise okay. or there is another version you have already p and r. So, why to write it earlier we are writing it because entailment equivalence it is there since it is there it is already there as a premise. So, we simply add p implies not q say that it is a premise then use both the lines. Okay. So, we say p implies not q fine. Now, third line from p and r p implies not q we wanted to conclude not q by mod exponents, but we cannot as it is it has to be p. So, let us write p p and r implies p right it entails p elimination. So, it is 1 elimination. right 
then fourth one is from 2 and 3 we apply mode exponents to get not q. So, we document 2, 3 and mode exponents. Okay. Then fifth one will be another premise you are using r is already there anyway whenever you need we will bring from 1 with not q you wanted not t implies q. So, introduce not t implies q premise and then sixth one is not not t 4 5 modus tollens. Now, you see how it goes. So, take it as an exercise and complete it.